Hey guys, welcome to our C3 SYD Youth online experience. Wherever you're tuning in from, we're so glad that you're here. Get ready, service is about to start. We love you. I'm ready to go. Have you seen, have you seen Jesse? I don't know where he is. One minute, 37 seconds later. Two very boring minutes later. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. Whew. Where have you been? Oh. Man, have you, have you heard? No? We're going on coronation, man. Coronation? Dude, we're going on coronation. Oh. Ready? We'll just get there. Three, two, one. Coronation! Man. Oh my goodness. Nothing but good vibes and sea breeze. Man, solids. Oh my goodness. Six and a half hours later. I ordered a, um, an orange juice fresh express with pineapple uh, toppings, thanks. Two hours later. Hey, welcome back welcome to back. another week <laughs> of C3 Youth S Lady Online no. Experience. I'm getting used to this, you know. I thought, you know, it's our third week. It's our third week. We deserve a coronation. We're getting used to this, you know. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm this close to putting my feet up. Literally, I just need to go out here and just get a suntan right now. Just Maybe like, I will. Maybe I will. Did you like a mess out there? Don't Hope you're rugging up tight, staying safe. The world's a bit crazy, but don't worry. We got Jesus and we're safe, so we got each other. And we're on coronation. Coronation. Mm -hmm. We're about to kick into it. Let's jump in. Let's go. Hey, well, we love singing songs and making a, a, a song of joy, and we're going to worship right now. We're going to be led by our C3 SYD youth band. So wherever you're at, if you're in the living room, feel free to clap along, sing along, and uh, let's, let's worship God together. trembles out your voice you lift my eyes above the shore oh here and now you're drawing close oh Jesus my savior the lifter of my head your peace is overwhelming the strength for every day and through all my worries the shield is all around me your presence surrounds me to the broken hearted you hear my call on the darkest night you take me out to the depths uncharted
and face to face with God of the heavens. Oh, you place the stars. Oh, you hold my and all my days. Oh, I am surrounded. Oh, I am surrounded by your love and face. good as God. I'm going to break off into connect groups and just pray for a minute. Come on, why don't you lift your, lift your prayers, lift your burdens, lift your worries to Jesus because He cares for you and He hears you. Well, oh my gosh, how good is our worship team, our youth band, and uh, Clarky, Nat Clark, Luke Clark, they're not related, uh, Lucy Laidlaw, these guys are geniuses, so so good to sing and worship God together and uh, in your living room, which is, which is amazing that even in the middle of everything that's happening, we can keep worshiping and looking to God. God is everything. God is all you need. The best thing you can do is worship Him. And we're going to continue our worship by giving. And we're generous, so right now you can take whatever you've got to give, bring your tithe, your 10%. And there's some giving options on the screen. If you need help with that, you can talk to your Connect Group leader, and they'll help you with this moment right now where you can give, bring that tithe to God. We believe in being generous, and we believe in bringing the tithe. So let's keep doing that. Even online, let's keep bringing our tithe to God. Let me pray for you as you take what you've got to give. Lord, I just thank you for every person right now bringing their tithe, bringing that gift to you. And Lord, we want to honor you first, above all things, in our finances. Lord, even, even if we earn $10 a week, we want to honor you with that $1. So we bring that to you right now. Pray you bless every person giving in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, well, we love you and stay tuned for what's happening next. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Did we solve that issue from the last week? Amen. Or Was amen. it amen or amen? Amen or amen. People are saying amen. Amen. Yeah, it's amen. Almonds are like almonds. Almonds. I don't like almonds. Ooh, controversial. 
great praying from you all. Yeah. In, um, in, Man, you guys can pray. You can pray, you know, whether you're with, your, with friends or yeah. at home by yourself. Mm -hmm. You can always pray. Pray. Right. And remember, so, the more you pray to the Lord, the less you break the law. You are fake news. And so right now we have a student testimony. Oh, hello. Yeah, man, get ready for this. This is you. This is your story. Think yeah. about this. Think about your story, and this is just going to impact you. So roll that clip. Hi, I'm Toby McDonald. I'm 13. I go to Narrabeen Sports High, and I'm in Luke Clark's Camp Coof. And this is my story. So at the moment I'm with um, Luke Clark. Like we're just at the moment this year we've just been connecting a lot more with God. Um, now that we've had like a connection with the boys, now we can connect with God more. And like Luke's been teaching us how to read the Bible properly mm -hmm. and um, like pray to God and just um, be in His presence. Like we're not in the same room as the whole of youth. We're in the same room. It's just our friends and like people that we feel comfortable with. Through Kids Church, I didn't really have like a strong group of friends at church. So when I came to youth, I was pretty stoked. We've always had like the, a solid group of boys throughout that time. And just like being able to be with them and be friends with them at youth, just have someone to like be there for you, it's just so good. And then like we're so comfortable with them. Growing up in Christian family, it was, um, it was just sort of normal for me. I just didn't really know anything else. So we'd always pray before bed and before dinner and throughout the day. But we never really had like a very personal relationship just because we were so long, young. Obviously mum and dad did, but not like we didn't really know what it meant to be like fully Christian. Um, I didn't have to like worry about my siblings being a youth, like and embarrassing myself in front of them. So um, it was just sort of like a lot more comfortable going to youth as like the oldest child. And then getting to see like Luca now at youth, my first younger brother. Um, and just because we have a pretty strong connection with us too, so it's just more, a lot more comfortable. So I came to youth at the last term of year six. Like Pastor Alex was preaching the f like first time I was at youth, and I I like put up my hand to to connect with God for like the first week. So I was just like like really getting into it at that point, and then summer camp came and just like filled me even more with God. But we've because we've only been online for I think two weeks now, we just and just had an amazing time, like speaking with each other and talking about God after the preach after Alex's preach. Well, I've sort of been scooting since like like my whole life since day one. We always used to go to skate parks when we were on holidays, just like quiet skate parks, and we just go around as a family. I first sort of really started getting into it when I. Um, when my new Valley Skate Park first got built in 2016, around September I think, I we just go all the time from then, and we just like I just got better and better. At the skate park, there's obviously a lot of peer pressuring through drugs sort of things at the skate park, and I, like I just don't want to be there because it just I don't know you can get addicted so very easily, and it just like um, it will wreck your whole life if you keep going and. Um, I just like want to. I just like have to stay with God and just pray that I just don't um, go to that sort of place. More recently, I can't remember which night it was, but I think this first time of 2020, um, it was just a usual sort of Friday night. Tim just um, called out my name all of a sudden, and I was like, "Oh, that's me!" <laughs> and then he's like, um, "I see you like prophesizing." over kids at the skate park, your friends at the skate park to come to youth and come to God. And I was just like such a big moment. And I already have, I think, two of my mates from the skate park. And I go to youth, I oh, went to youth and I didn't even know um, before I went to, like started going. And they just like were there and I was like, oh, what, These, you guys come on. And um, so that's just been such a great like thing to have, to invite people to. And like even my school friends, I just, um, just be like really open to invite them to youth. I just feel God's called me to be at a skate park, just bring people through the skate park to youth and um, thank him that he's going to protect me throughout my years at the skate park and through youth 
and all my friends at the skate park and youth as well. Oh wow, what an amazing story! Oh my goodness! Oh dear to you, kind sir. Oh my, my goodness. Now we have another installment of How to Survive Corona. How to and this time, Jesse. Yeah. I mean, it's just with Eloise because I don't think Emily survived Corona. But we're heading live now to just Eloise. What do you have to tell us, Elle? Hi, I'm Eloise, and this is How to Survive COVID-19. What do you do when you run out of toilet paper? Because we know we've all been there. Number one. Hands? No, okay, no. Guys, who wrote this script? We are not using hands. We're not telling our youth to use Number two. When you gotta do a number two? Leaves. Leaves, yep. And number three. Sandpaper. We are going to pretend we didn't hear that. Hey, thanks, um, cross Wow, out. thank you, Eloise. Well, um, Jesse, hands? Sandpaper? I think it is the end of the world if you have to use your hands. <laughs> I'd rather chuck out some undies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my god. Like, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm just, I'm gonna be really honest. I've done, These... I've done that before. Oh no. <laughs> Everyone, let's reach out your hands. Je Jedi's for Jesus. Just let's just pray for Jesus. Amen. Because uh, he just, he Amen. just over shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a breaking news story coming in right now live from Silverwater with Lindsay. All the way at Silverwater to you, Lindsay. Thanks, guys. I am here at Silverwater live with breaking news that El Janas has officially been shut. Timmy over here has eaten El Janas in the last month. It was great. And apparently, I've never been on live television before. Good luck, and good night back to you guys. Wow, there you have it, folks. That's what's there happening in the silver water right now. Love it. Stay woke. But right now, we're going to hear a word from our pastor, Pastor Alex Lee. Pastor Alex Lee. So get your seatbelt, you. strap in, because it's going to be a good one. We may be on coronation, but we still get to hear the oh, word. Oh, that's so true. We do not vacate on the word. <laughs> so no take vacation. it away. Right now. Pass it out. Guys, welcome to week three of our online youth experience. And we've had week one, we've had week two, and then this is week three. So if you're here, wherever you're at, in the living room, if you're here with friends, if you're here for the first time tuning into this, if you're viewing this, we've got people viewing this I mean, in Sydney, we've got people viewing this beyond that. So we want to welcome you too. If you're from an, another youth ministry, we want to welcome you. But if you're part of C3 SYD Youth, we want to welcome you. And uh, if you're here, you've never been in an experience like this, I want you to know we're not here to judge your journey. We're here to celebrate your steps. And we want you to know that, that God is uh, God loves you. God, God cares about you. God um, knows you. And I can imagine in this time, maybe if you're, Listen to this for the first time. You might be feeling a little nervous about what's happening in the world today. And we totally understand that. But we do believe that God is with us. God loves you. And God has a great plan for your life, no matter what we're facing at this time. And um, today we've been talking about, you know, what do you do when the rhythm of life is interrupted? And we've been in a theme called New Rhythms. And we're continuing that theme, but from a different angle. We've talked about building your life on the rock that is Jesus. Last week we talked about um, being in a, a rhythm that remains and remaining connected to God in prayer, in the Word, in relationships, in, in connection. And uh, today, tonight, I want to start a two-week little mini thought around this idea of going from read to rock. And if we're going to give it a clearer title, it would be from read to to rock. So why don't you turn to somebody and just tell them, from read to rock. You know, if you just want to yell it as a connect group, you can yell it one, two, three, from read to rock. And I want to talk about this idea of how when we meet Jesus, He takes us from read to rock. I don't know if you've ever been to the gym. Have you, if, have you been to the gym? If you've been to the gym, just 
wave. Yep, holler at your boy. Yeah, I'm in the gym. If you're 12 years old, um, stop going to the gym. It's bad for you. But if you're like, you know, older, uh, if you're like Bryce Harry and you go to the gym every day and you're like the Hulk, uh, if, you, if you're like Sateki Latu, if you're like Unga, um, whoever you are, if you, if you go to the gym, you'll know that you kind of can't go one time. Uh, if you go to the gym, you've got to go multiple times. It, it, it takes a bit of a rhythm. And um, I, I remember going to the gym. Uh, I, I used to have a really weak core, you know, like your abs. And having a strong core in soccer is really important. In fact, a strong core in any sport is really important. But I, remember I had such a weak core. And it meant that I was really uh, easily pushed around, easily moved around um, on the soccer field. You could easily push me off the ball. Big dude, small dude, they just beat me off the ball too easily. But it was because my core wasn't strong. But then I started doing some sit-ups. You know, I started doing the plank. Like, how good's a plank? Love a good plank. You know, do the plank, did a lot of sit-ups, um, worked on my abs. And as I worked on my abs, my core got strong. You could say my core went from reed to rock. And here we're going to read in this scripture about a guy called Peter, whose name was previously Simon. And he has this moment where he meets, he's talking to Jesus and he, and he really has an idea. He gets a clear revelation, we would call it, of who Jesus is. And his name was Simon, but Jesus renames him Peter. Simon means reed. Peter means rock. And in one moment of meeting Jesus, having a real idea and revelation of who Jesus was, he went from reed to to rock. Let's read it in Matthew 4, 16. I'm sorry. Turn there if you got your Bible. Turn to Matthew 16, verse 13 to 20. Get out your Bible app. Get a get a get a TYB Bible. Trash your Bible. Um, we we got weekly devotionals at the moment. We got Katie Haldane doing some trash your Bible content for youth. Tune in on a Tuesday. I'll be doing live devotionals for our youth. But let's let's keep um, in the Word of God. Matthew 16, 13 to 20. It says this, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then Jesus asked, but what about you? Turn to your neighbor and say, but what about you? Yeah, turn to someone and say, what about you? Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Simon, soon to be Peter, answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell or Hades will not overcome it. Isn't it amazing? In this moment, Jesus asks Peter who he is. Like, here's God, and he says to Peter, hey, um, who do you say I am? Which is weird, because surely God knows who he is. Like, surely God knows that he's God. So was Jesus asking Peter who he was because he needed to know who he was? Or was he asking Peter who he was because the most important thing that about God for you is what you say about God? The most impacting thing about Jesus in your life is your understanding of who Jesus is. And it's not until you realize and can see who Jesus really is that you realize who you really are. Your identity is wrapped up in your understanding of Jesus. From reed to rock. Without Jesus, we're like a reed. 
blown in the wind, tossed to and fro. The coronavirus, fires, storms, all these things come. And because if we are like a reed without God, in our own strength, we are weak, we are hopeless, and we are lost. We're like a reed. But when we have a revelation of Jesus, when you meet Jesus, you go from being a reed to a rock. Suddenly, when you have Jesus in your life, you're strong, you're solid, you're confident. You have a faith that won't waver in times of trouble from reed to rock. And I'm praying that like Peter, that if you're feeling like a bit of a Simon, you're feeling a bit weak, feeling a bit nervous, that maybe you need to have a real revelation of Jesus. You need to see who Jesus really is. And I want to help you today, tonight, to get an understanding of Jesus for yourself. Now, maybe you listen to this and your mom and dad, they're Christian. You know, they believe in Jesus. They come to church. They follow God. Well, that's cool, but that doesn't make you a Christian. When was the moment that you realized who Jesus is. Maybe you're sitting here and you've grown up in church and you're like, hang on, you know what? That has never happened for me. Well, that could happen right now. Right now, God, by His Spirit, by the power of God, He could reveal who Jesus is. That you could have an understanding. Because one of the things we need in life is identity. Identity. And if your identity is in your social media, if your identity is in the clothes you wear, your hair, if your identity is wrapped up in anything out, outside of God, it is weak and it is vulnerable. We are made in the image of God. We are made like God. God, God made us like Him. We are sons and daughters of God. And whether we know it or not, we are. But it's not until you look at Jesus and you have an understanding, a revelation, a relationship with Him that you realize who you are. Maybe here tonight, that's going to happen for you. Maybe you're going to realize who Jesus is and in turn realize who you are. Colossians 3 verse 3 says this, For you died... And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Maybe you can feel like who you are is on the external. Maybe you can feel like, uh, you know, your identity is according to who people say you are. Maybe you've been labeled. Maybe people have labeled you that you're stupid, that you're dumb, that you're, you're never going to do well in life that you're going to be just like your mom or your dad or your, your uncle or your crazy auntie, whatever. Someone has said, you're going to, you're going to be like this. Maybe, maybe one time you made a mistake and now everybody labels you according to your mistake. Maybe a relationship, you got dumped and now everybody is labeling, labeling you according to that experience. Maybe people are labeling you according to where you live. Maybe people are, are labeling you according to your sexuality. Maybe people are labeling you. We live in a world that wants to label you, that wants to give you an identity from an external point of view. Call you things. Maybe a teacher said something about you. Maybe even someone close to you labeled you and you're living stuck in that label. That label makes you like a reed. But right now, God wants to give you a new name. A new name that's like a rock in your life. God wants to relabel you. Not according to what people say, but according to what He says. Listen to me, God loves you. God is for you. God is not against you. God is not disappointed. God is very happy with the way He made you. Whether you feel goofy, 
whether you feel clumsy, God made you that way. Whether you feel like you're good looking, or you feel like you're not good looking, God has made you perfectly the way you are. We need you. We don't need you to be someone you're not. We need you to be you. So if you dance really white like me and it's really uncool, that's fine. Be you. If you have rhythm and you are actually in tune, be you. Don't try and be something you're not. God doesn't want to make you something you're not. God wants to affirm who you really are. But it's not until you realize who Jesus is that you see the reflection of who you are made to be. Jesus is like a mirror. The Bible is Jesus. It's, Jesus is the Word. When you look at the Word, it's like a mirror. It shapes who you really are. And here tonight, God wants to rename you. Maybe you've been labeled depressed. God wants to rename you joyful. Maybe you've been labeled that you're not smart. God wants to relabel you here that you are intelligent. You're a genius. Maybe, maybe you've been labeled hopeless. God wants to relabel you that you have a bright future. Maybe you're here and you've been labeled that you're just a worried, nervous person. God wants to relabel you tonight. You're confident. You're strong. You're more than a conqueror. You can do anything you put your mind to. You can succeed in life. You can do well. Maybe you've been labeled unloved or unlovable. God wants to relabel you that you are loved, that you are known, that you are valuable, that you are important to God. And so right here, right now, we're going to have a moment to realize who Jesus is in our world. I'm going to pray for anybody who wants to invite Jesus into their heart. But you might want to take a moment, and we're going to do this in our connect groups. We're going to ask, and we're going to talk about who is Jesus to you. We're going to take a moment to talk about this. Who is Jesus to you? Who do you say Jesus is? Because that's the most important thing about your relationship with God is who do you say, not who does your parents say, not who do I say, who do you say Jesus is? Before we talk about that, why don't you just bow your heads, close your eyes, wherever you are. And I want you to invite Jesus into your life if you've never done this. Maybe you're here and you have done this and you've grown up Christian and your parents are Christian. But are you? Meaning, do you have a relationship with God? Have you invited Him into your life? If you haven't, now's your moment to invite Him in. You can take a second right now to invite Jesus into your heart. If that's you, I'm going to count to three. And I want you just to raise your hand. Then I'm going to lead you in a prayer to invite Jesus into your life. So here we go. Whatever you do, don't miss this. Maybe you want to let your connect group leader know. Maybe you want to chat to us. You can do that through our live chat. Just say, hey, I've, I invited Jesus into my life tonight. What do I do now? But wherever you're at, close your eyes for privacy reasons. I'll count to three. Just raise your hand. Just acknowledge, and then I'll lead you in this prayer. Here we go. Count to three. One, two, three. Yeah, if that's you, just just raise your hand. Just acknowledge that. Maybe just maybe maybe you're just with one other person. Just let them know that's me. That's me. God loves you so much. And He wants to reveal who you really are. But that starts by realizing who Jesus really is. So here we go. We're going to lead you in this prayer. I'll give you the words you to say it with me. Say this. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I give you my heart. I turn from sin. I turn from old things. I turn to you. I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you know me. I thank you that I am forgiven. 
I am washed clean. And here tonight, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, wherever you are, why don't you clap your hands? Yeah, clap your hands. It's going through the stream. Yeah, we can hear louder, louder. Yeah, that's better. That's better. If, if you gave your life to Jesus, we just want to say congratulations. That is the best decision you could ever make. And we're praying that you would be encouraged. Stay connected. Talk to somebody about this. We want to help you follow Jesus. Stay tuned into these live youth experiences online. And so we want to help you with that. But we are so excited about all that's happening. And uh, stay tuned for next week. We're continuing our online youth experience. We love you. Stay strong. And we'll see you soon. Amen. This moment Pastor is Alex. Going, coming through. How great is it that the, the presence of God comes through online into your very living room, your bedroom, wherever you are. And if that was you, if you, you know, felt that Jesus was, was in, in your room there with you, in your heart, and you accepted him into your life, we want to know about it. We want to help you uh, get to know more about Jesus, get you plugged in and into a leader who can help follow you up. So Ty, yeah. what do we do? You got to hit the link. Boom. Yep. Oh, Not up. Don't go out low. Don't go to the side. Don't even look to the left. Don't look to one the right. Place, one place you need to go. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Absolutely. Click that and um, we can't wait to see you follow Jesus yeah. in every stage of your life. And now, this is it from us, but we have our post party hangs on Zoom. Zoom time! So we'll hoot, see you on Zoom. Hoot, hoot. Big love, guys. We'll see you next week. Yo!